everybody. My name is Eric Hopkins, and this is my good buddy Brandon, and welcome to our NFL recap show for week two of the NFL regular season here in 2021. And if you're finding us for the very first time, please click that like and subscribe button, and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you get all the notifications about when we put up new content right here on this channel. So this was a week of chock full of injuries, <laughs> first and foremost here in the NFL. We're going to run down all those here. We're going to go over all the scores and highlights and things like that. Uh, before we get started, uh, did you get to check out a lot of these games this weekend, Brandon, or did you uh, kind of just check it out what you could yeah. throughout the week? Yeah. <laughs> yeah did you see the watch. Steelers game? I didn't or? get to watch any much of any games this weekend, but like I, because of fantasy, I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's been a long week for us here on the channel. For those of you who will be checking out the channel throughout this week, we may have some shows where may, Brandon may not be involved sometimes or I may not be around. But uh, the only other show we normally do each week is the wrestling show. And I think we're, you know, we'll see about that because our schedule at work, we've been doing some third shift work overnight, do some uh, some mandatory overtime type stuff. So uh, if there's a little bit of changes on the channel here this week, forgive us. But uh, we'll try to get up as much content still here as much as we can. But with that being said, I'll get a little house cleaning out of the way here. Uh, let's get into some of these scores throughout the week here. Uh, week two started off with the New York Giants uh, versus the Washington football team. The Washington football team on Thursday night football win in a squeaker here, 30 to 29. Uh, so this was as close as close can get here. Yeah, um, it was crazy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, to be totally honest, I didn't see a whole lot of this game uh, because we were trying to get acclimated to this new third shift schedule and things like that that we were getting ready for. So, unfortunately, I didn't get to see a whole lot of it. But I, because I have Terry McLaurin in our fantasy football league here, I did check out that. <laughs> And he was the first Washington player with 10-plus receptions, 100-plus yards, and a touchdown uh, since Pierre Garçon in, in 2014. So that's an interesting stat to bring up here. Uh, from what I can tell, um, Daniel Jones looked more efficient in this game. But I'm still not sure if I buy Daniel Jones as the future for the New York Giants. Uh, I was kind of hopeful on him a couple years ago because uh, I had him in fantasy. I picked him up after a... Uh, quarterback went down i can't remember which one got hurt or whatever, whatever the case might have been but i was or yeah my starting quarterback not the giants quarterback and i was like thinking well you know maybe he's got some potential but i don't know if it's the offensive line that's causing him so much trouble uh saquon barkley's not playing up to his stuff either obviously he's coming off an injury and things like that but um that that giants offense has definitely got some issues and hopefully they'll get him squared away but even kenny galladay said before the season they didn't have a whole lot of time together so there's going to be some slow starts here for the giants uh but for the redskins uh good to see them get a win here with taylor henneke under center after ryan fitzpatrick went down to an injury but uh yeah so good yeah, win for I the football think, uh, team uh, henneke i think it's his name yeah i think Heine uh, heineke heineke, heineke, heineke. heineke yeah. Yeah. uh he's replacing <laughs> fitzpatrick on this team for the rest of the year. Started, yeah. I mean, they, and, they, and they had him toward the end of last year, and he was serviceable. Um, mm -hmm. But in both cases, I mean, that, I don't think they're, they're you know, if you want to talk like franchise quarterbacks, the, the, neither guy is probably their future. Um, but definitely, you know, for the time being, until maybe they can get a, themselves into a better draft position or whatnot. Uh, mm -hmm. But, yeah, good win here. And, 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 the, and the NFC East uh, was kind of struggling out of the gates in week one a little bit, I think. Uh, I know the Cowboys got themselves a win this week as well, which has kind of surprised me a little bit based on the uh, team that they played. But uh, we'll see how they do. But uh, good win here for them on Thursday Night Football. So it's a good way to start the week off. Getting into the rest of the week, I'm going to try to go through these injuries as we get to the games. Now, hopefully I won't forget one here. Uh, but we have, uh, first off on Sunday, was the New England Patriots versus the New York Jets. Uh, as, w as we predicted here on this show last week, we feel like uh, the Patriots would get their first win of the season here, and that they did. Mm -hmm. The Patriots win 25-6. to This was actually, um, even though the Patriots, it looks to me like they're playing very conservative football right now because mm -hmm. they got a young quarterback, and you know they're not taking a whole lot of risks, and I understand that. Uh, against the Jets, though, I mean, it, 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 the, the, they're, the Jets are the Jets at this point. I hate to say it. Uh -huh. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, the Jets, uh, I mean, everybody had high hopes for them with their rookie uh, quarterback, Zach Wilson, and things like that. But uh, it just feels like the Jets are going to be the Jets, and I don't know what it's going to take to get this franchise turned around. Uh, they had some years there with Mark Sanchez and stuff where they were doing okay with, with uh, Rex Ryan as their head coach, but even made the AFC title game at one point. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, since that time, it's just kind of been uh, – you know, downhill, and I and I don't know what it's going to take to get these uh, to get this team rolling again. But it's interesting to note here: the New England Patriots have now won 11 straight games against the New York Jets. So. Um Obviously, the Patriots have been dominant in that division for many years now. They're not quite as dominant in that division now. It kind of seems like the division's now owned by the Buffalo Bills. But um, we'll see where they go. Uh, New England's still a young and up-and-coming team here, so we'll see if they get better as the season progresses here. 
Uh, then we had the Denver Broncos. They defeated the Jacksonville Jaguars 23-13. to uh, The Denver Broncos defense, uh, speaking from somebody who owns them in the fantasy league, um, they start have a good good start to the season. Granted, their first three uh, opponents are kind of on the weaker side with the Giants, Jaguars, and next week they get the New York Jets. So it's kind of hard to tell if the Broncos are that elite defense yet, or if they're just uh, you know benefiting from excellent matchups here. Uh, but the, the the Jaguars, I mean, I, I still didn't see a whole lot that really impressed me with Trevor Lawrence yet. Um, but uh, other than that, I really, to be totally honest, I didn't really see a whole lot from this game. Uh, now the Jacksonville Jaguars have now lost 17 straight games. Uh, it's the longest active streak since Detroit in the 2007 through the 2009 seasons. I can't remember. That might have been the seasons they went. Uh, 0 16 on. I don't remember. Mm-hmm. But uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars uh, definitely. The last game they won was against the Indianapolis Colts in week one of last year. So, yeah, as a Colts fan, that's not something, you know, I like to hear. But we'll get into the Colts here in a little bit, too. Uh, next up, we had the Buffalo Bills defeated the Miami Dolphins. This was a complete shutout, 35-0. to zero. Uh, The mm-hmm. Bills absolutely, you know, dominated the Dolphins here. Interesting to note, though, in this game, uh, the Miami Dolphins quarterback, Tua Tagovailoa, Tagovailoa, however you say his name. I just call him Tua. He suffered bruised ribs, and he left the game. Uh, X-rays came back negative, so it sounds like it'll be about pain tolerance and functionality moving forward for Tua. So it sounds like he'll be able to come back and play possibly even this week in week three uh, just depends on how well he feels but good news there for him and the Dolphins as a whole uh, for the Buffalo Bills this was the largest shutout win since week three of 1992 for the Bills so good on them the Bills are legit in the AFC no doubt about it uh, so we'll see how that goes moving forward uh, we, then we had the 49ers the San Francisco 49ers defeated the Philadelphia Eagles 17 to 11 here uh, and for the Philadelphia Eagles here tight end Zach Ertz now has COVID uh, just so everybody knows that, even though he is vaccinated, it's there's still a chance he could still play next Monday night if he shows no symptoms and tests negative twice in a 24-hour span, uh, 24 hours apart from each test. So, mm-hmm. uh, now I, I, I believe you have Zach Ertz, don't do you not in a fantasy league? Yep, yep. So. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure he's quite doing much to begin with just yet. There's a lot of tight ends around the NFL, and that's kind of always been the story with the tight ends in the NFL. It's like some weeks they go go off. I mean, look at Rob Gronkowski the last two weeks, but then at some point Rob Gronkowski is going to disappear for about a nine-week stretch. So you just never can tell with some of these players. Mm-hmm. There's only a select few that are really uh, consistent in that regard. Uh, but all, when it comes to the 49ers, too, as well here, <laughs> outside of the Baltimore Ravens, I've not seen a team in recent memory have this many running back injuries. Uh, the Ravens, obviously, are, you know, last week we talked about how they had to go pick up some players because they lost three of their uh, running backs, their top three runners. Now we've got Raheem Mostert. He de- definitely came out this week and said he is done for the season, so that is for sure now. Yep. Uh, and Guess who count. has him? Yeah, yeah, Brandon has him as well. Um, but uh, their, their backup, who uh, g- kind of had a good game in week one, everybody jumped on the waiver wire, myself included, and got him this week. Uh, Elijah Mitchell uh, suffered a right shoulder injury. He is day-to-day, so chances are he'll be back. But the other two, um, the, run- the running back Trey Sermon has a concussion, so we don't know how long he's going to be out. And the running back uh, Jamichael Hasty suffered a high ankle sprain Sunday and is, in the words of head coach Kyle Shanahan, "Quote unquote, for sure, going to be out next Sunday night versus the Packers. So, definitely in some shambles there. But uh, they 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 got a Sunday night game coming up here with the Green Bay Packers, and the Packers uh, are playing right now on Monday Night Football. I don't know exactly how that game's going. It just started uh, since we got third shift. We're not going to get to see the entire you know game and talk about it here on this show. Uh, but we'll maybe talk about it a little bit next week. But we'll see how that goes, and we'll see if Aaron Rodgers can bounce back from that." horrible week one performance that the Packers had. Uh, but uh, Detroit, you know, they're not going to be no pushover, I think. They looked good last week, so we'll see what happens in Lambeau for sure. Uh, then the game I really don't want to talk about, but we're going to do anyway. The Los Angeles Rams come into Indianapolis and defeat the Colts 27-24 to here. Um Los Angeles Rams 2 and 0 start for the fourth straight season. It seems like this is the first this is the 0 and 2 start for the Colts for like what seems like the last 4 or 5 seasons too. It just seems like they cannot seem to get out of the gate here uh in in quick uh, succession here. They always start out uh, behind the eight ball. Um for the Colts just as a Colts fan, uh first I guess first and foremost it's interesting to note that quarterback Carson Wentz uh, was rolled up on by Aaron Donald late in the game, like in, in the fourth quarter. We were actually tied with the Rams, I believe, at this point. And um, he gets rolled up on, and now he has an ankle sprain, not in one, but both ankles. So he that's very rarely you see ankle sprains in both both ankles at the same time. Uh, Coach Frank Reich said it's too early to tell if he can play on Sunday or not, but it's worth monitoring. Let's hope he can because – 
the very next series when Jacob Beeson came in, when we had a chance to go down there and possibly tie the ball game or maybe even take the lead to win the game, mm-hmm. Jacob Beeson's first throw was an interception, game over. So <laughs> as soon as he got out there, interception. Um, but, I mean, it's a tough spot for Jacob Beeson to come in at. I mean, it's a game that, believe it or not, despite all the problems that the Indianapolis Colts have been having with their offensive line and their uh, secondary a little bit, um, the Colts were in this game. Uh, they started off kind of rocky, but the Colts had a chance to win this game. Had Carson Wentz not got hurt, I feel like there's a possibility we would have won. And Wentz, despite the fact that he was under fire because of that offensive line, um, he was he was at one point 100 percent completion percentage. Uh, mm-hmm. I think he towards a little bit later on. I think he, he was like uh, I don't know 20 and 30 or something like that. Uh, but yeah, he looks he looks sharp. He looked good. Uh, we just got to keep him on the field at this point. And again, that kind of falls on the line. Part of it, he maybe Carson Wentz a little bit holding the ball a little too long when he's throwing the ball as well. He kind of wait to see if some guy's open. But he's been making good decisions and good reads. Um, and obviously, we hit. He now has three touchdown passes on the season. All of them have gone to Zach Pascal. Um, so Michael Pittman obviously had over a hundred yards in this game too. No score. Uh, but it'd be good to have T.Y. Uh, T. Hilton back maybe to draw some coverage off some of these guys would maybe be a good thing. But I don't know how quickly he's going to be coming back. Um, but yeah, any thoughts on the Colts here? As a Colts fan here, <laughs> just got a disappointment at this point. Sad. Yeah, I mean, I and, and I mentioned and a couple guys at work uh, had talked to me about you know, oh, the Colts blew that one. You know, I was like, yeah. well, here's the, th-. I was like, here's the thing though, that the positives not that I just mentioned, notwithstanding here, there are issues that they need to get corrected. And some of it, and not only that, in the first quarter, the Colts got on the the one yard line had three or four opportunities to punch it in, and they couldn't get the job done. They came away with no points. They got in the red zone again, couldn't come away with any points. So, again, points left on the board. You could have kicked field goals for if you're Frank Reich. Did not choose to go that route, uh, and those field goals could have actually been enough to win the game in the end. Uh, But at the same time, I mean, you know, it's just the the Colts have got to get over that hump. And I I think, uh, you know, Wentz looking good is encouraging. And not only that, I've been told a couple guys at work too, the only teams who have won in the AFC South right now are the Houston Texans. They won a week one. They got a win. They lost this week. The Titans and Jaguars both lost week one. And this week, only the Titans got a win. So as of right now, the Houston Texans and Titans are the only two teams in the division with one win apiece. So the Colts are only one game back in the division. So it's not panic mode yet. Uh, The Colts got a very big game this Sunday against the Tennessee Titans. So if they beat the Titans, the Colts could jump to first place next week. So it's not... Over, it's not doom and gloom, but and not to mention the Rams and the Seahawks are two of the best teams in the NFL from the looks of things right now. So hopefully the schedule will kind of become a little bit more favorable to the Colts, and we'll see what happens. But right now, uh, 0-2, but we've been here before, and we've still made the playoffs just due to the fact that we're in the AFC South. So we'll just have to wait and see what happens there. Uh, next up, we had the Las Vegas Raiders <laughs> roll into Pittsburgh and defeat the Steelers 26-17. to Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure Miranda wasn't thrilled with that one. No. Um, but the, I mean, the, the, especially because here's the thing. Like Miranda, I think she likes Lisa, mm-hmm. but Lisa is a Los Angeles or Las Vegas Raiders fan by accident, mind you. Oh, well, one of our supervisors fan. at work? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So knowing that the Raiders beat Pittsburgh last night when we were at work and Lisa had on her jersey, I was just <laughs> like, ah. Oh. <laughs> oh, see, I didn't see that. Yeah, okay. she had her jersey. <laughs> yeah, she's well, a Raiders fan by accident. It was it, it, intentional. Interesting. How's that by accident? Do you have the story I, there? She went to a game. Uh-huh. Um, when she when she used to live out that way or whatever, and but she was there just to go because of some friends or something like that, and they were sitting on the Oakland Raiders side, and she goes. By the end of the game, we were getting ready to leave, and like I think Oakland won or something. And she goes, "Everybody was so nice. People were just like giving her random hugs, giving her <laughs> beer, all this, that, and the third. Yeah. And it just kind of was one of those things. It was just like, oh, okay. So she became a. Oh. I'm sorry, <laughs> a Raiders fan. Jesus. Right, right. Well, I mean, I mean, there's worse reasons to become fans. I mean. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, I remember my, my, my dad and stepmom is kind of off topic, but they went to New York City not too long ago, for, uh, and they, they were surprised at how many people were actually nice in New York City. Because, I mean, the stories mm-hmm. are, like, oh, you know, nobody's nice in New York City. They're all, you know, jerks and stuff. But they were like, no, no, you, if you want to go down to see the Empire State Building, you can go that way, you know. Mm-hmm. It's just it, – it's, it's, it's amazing how much a little bit of kindness will go a long way, especially yeah. when it comes to fan bases and things like that. So sorry for that little side story there. But anyhow, uh, but, yeah, the Raiders here, you know, don't sleep on the Las Vegas Raiders. Um 
I thought for sure, maybe in the coming of the season with the Kansas City Chiefs in that division. I mean, it's it's still the Chiefs' division in my opinion, and the Chargers are coming on a little bit with their young quarterback and Herbert. Uh, the Broncos, we'll see what they do with their defense and things like that. And I mean, even Teddy Bridgewater's not looked terrible. Um, but uh, the Raiders, I mean, they beat the Ravens on Monday Night Football, and a thriller goes to overtime and win that game. And now they come in here and beat the Steelers. I mean, those that's not two you know weak teams they just beat, and. Um, in this case, it felt a little more convincing than it did against the Ravens. Uh, Derek Carr throws for 350-plus yards, two touchdowns in three straight games uh, for the longest streak in Las Vegas history. But also on that note here, uh, Derek Carr, uh, if I can find it here, uh, has a minor, minor ankle injury. He came out of the game for a stint. He played every snap in the game, though. And he did come back in versus the, the Steelers. Coach Gruden expects that he'll play uh, next week, so it's probably not a big issue for Derek Carr. But a lot of ankle injuries, and, and a lot of quarterbacks, especially in the league this week, got injured. Uh, and he was yet another one out of those. But it doesn't sound like it's on the severe side of things. Uh, for the Steelers, though, I don't. I hate to say it, and I, know, I hope Miranda don't slap me if she sees this, but Ben Roethlisberger <laughs> looks all but finished, in my uh, opinion. So we had this conversation before, and – because I said last year I thought Ben was going to be done and mm-hmm. she somewhat agreed mm-hmm. but she <laughs> she gets mad and when she yells at the TV she calls him a big, a big dumb target because <laughs> well yeah <laughs> I mean he so, is like it, yeah I mean yeah he's, he's he doesn't man. really move much you know yeah, that no, too he doesn't, he's, he's not, not very versatile as he used to be but granted too sometimes his offensive line is very protective you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of hard to get to him. And when you do, he's kind of fucked. But there are occasions <laughs> where he can he can roll out and still get, you know, get the pass off or whatever, depending on situation. But I, I like I said before, I thought Ben was, was going to be done last year. And, mm-hmm. you know, uh, that didn't happen. And I think it, it's maybe coming. they're going into next year or whatever, or even midseason. We'll see. Um, but I think they're going to have to start looking at getting another quarterback. I agree with you there. and But, I mean, they did get themselves a new running back. And to Najee Harris's credit, he's kind of had a little bit of a slow start. Part of that's the offensive line. The other part mm-hmm. is, you know, just kind of trying to learn the ways of the NFL as a rookie. Uh, but he did catch – to ben, to Big Ben's credit, though, he did throw a nice pass to Najee Harris, and Najee Harris did the work and got into the end zone for his first NFL touchdown here. But, yeah, just for whatever reason, it just feels like – I mean, and Chase Claypool, I remember I saw he dropped a big one, which hurt you because you played me in fantasy football. <laughs> but sorry, buddy. Uh, but <laughs> – Anyway, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I just feel like the Steelers' defense is going to be what gets them there uh, for the most part, and if uh, Najee Harris can get going. But now watch. Next week, Ben Roethlisberger will go out and throw for 400 yards and three scores. It's just You just can't tell, but uh, it's, it's early in the season, and a lot of teams are going to need to improve, and we'll see what they are a little bit later down the line. Right now, it's just kind of trying to feel uh, who is who in the NFL, and right now we'll just have to wait and see what the Steelers become. But uh, they had a good win against the Bills in Week 1, which was kind of a shock to many, I think, to a degree with where the Bills are. Um, but uh, the Steelers, they'll probably get things figured out if I know Mike Tomlin and that coach team. So they'll be just uh, fine. For I sure. About it. Yeah, it's just, it's just the way they are. Um, all right, so we'll move on to the next game here. The Cincinnati Bengals fall to the Chicago Bears. The Bears win 20-17 to in uh, Soldier Field here. The Chicago defense had four takeaways in the second half. So big-time turnover game here for the Bears defense here. Um, interesting to note in this game, uh, Andy Dalton. Did come off the field. Uh, he kind of pulled up lame on a on a quarterback scramble when he ran out of bounds. He apparently has a knee bruise. Nobody touched him, which was interesting. Uh, they they thought maybe he'd hurt his you know like an ACL or an MCL. Apparently he has no damage, or he, uh, he might have minor damage, but it's not a torn ACL or anything like that. So nothing super serious. Coach mm-hmm. Nagy confirmed he's still the team starter if he is able to play. But Justin Fields did come into this game, and he looks to continue to fill in during his absence. But we'll just have to wait and see how long Andy Dalton is out. Uh, it does kind of feel to me like sooner rather than later, Justin Fields is going to be named the starter. Um, but for now, as long as uh, Dalton's ready to play, it sounds like he will be back sooner rather than later here. Uh, now, from what I could tell, Justin Fields didn't have a terrible game or anything like that when he came in. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, it sounds like the Bears defense is the one that pretty much won the day here. Uh, and so, yeah, I mean, the Bengals fall here after the Bengals had a pretty impressive showing in week one, winning in that overtime game against, I believe, Minnesota. So um, the Bengals, uh, again, young quarterback, young receivers. Uh, Jamar Chase had a, a, his second NFL touchdown, I believe, in this game. So he's looking good. Uh, so that's good for the Bengals here. But uh, in this case, it looks like the Bears are moving on at one and one. 
then we had the uh, Cleveland Browns beat the Houston Texans in Cleveland. Uh, Cleveland gets their first win of the season here. Uh, they are 6-0 and in games following a loss under head coach Kevin Stefanski. Uh, so they dropped Week one to the Kansas City Chiefs, but the uh, Cleveland Browns come in here and get a win. I'm not going to lie, though. The Houston Texans, to me, are surprising me a little bit. Yeah. They're looking a little better than I gave them credit for. I thought I even said here on the channel the last few weeks I didn't think they were going to have a good season. They're playing tough, um, regardless of whoever their quarterback ends up being in regards to the injuries here. Let's go through this game here. The Cleveland Browns quarterback, Baker Mayfield, did hurt his left arm making a tackle versus Houston. It was either on an interception or a... I think it was interception in return. He tried to make the tackle. However, he did come back into this game and played through it, so it was his non-throwing arm, so hopefully he'll be okay. He did come back and finish, so at least he was able to finish. Uh, Cleveland wide receiver Jarvis Landry has an MCL sprain and will undergo further testing, so that's something worth keeping an eye on. Uh, whether or not he misses weeks, we'll have to wait and see. And for the Houston Texans, Tyrod Taylor, uh, the quarterback for the Texans, uh, has a hamstring injury. Reports state that he will be out for a while. Uh, I believe the swelling will not go down, and the uh, an IR stint could be in play here, but he definitely will not be playing on Thursday Night Football this week against the Panthers. So, I don't. I couldn't even tell you who the backup quarterback is right now uh, for Houston. That may affect the Texans. But while Tyrod was in there, they were playing some good football. Uh, so we'll have to see how this goes with Tyrod. But the Texans may fall off a little bit without their starting quarterback. So if that's the case, uh, maybe our original prediction will actually be more true. Yeah. But with their now, you know what? No matter who the quarterback is when they play the Colts, it's going to be a close game regardless. But uh, so yeah, so the Browns move on and the Texans drop to one and one. Uh, next up, we had the Carolina Panthers. They defeated the New Orleans Saints. The New Orleans Saints week one destroy the Green Bay Packers. Jameis mm-hmm. Winston has five touchdowns, looks like. Mm-hmm. The next coming of, you know, the, the next greatest quarterback, whatever you want to call it. And this game, they came back to earth, and the Panthers made the Saints look like the Packers, and the Panthers uh, rolled 26-7. to uh, Sam Darnold, it's his first 2-0 and start of his career. Mm-hmm. I believe I even mentioned before the season started that I thought now that Sam Darnold is away from the New York Jets, he'd have a little bit better of a career. And so far that has proven to be true uh, under some new coaching and new talent around him. Um, obviously, uh, Christian McCaffrey had a good day here. Obviously, had a lot of yardage again, as as, as always with that guy. Uh, but yeah, the Saints. Jameis Winston didn't. Uh, he got it kind of like I said, fell back down to earth here, and the Saints just couldn't get anything going. They couldn't stop anything on defense. Uh, so yeah, it's just uh, again, one week they look great, one week they don't. It's just it's just kind of it's going to be one of those things uh, with the Saints. Obviously, having to acclimate without Drew Brees this year. Uh, doesn't look like any major injuries from this game in particular. So if that's a positive for the Saints. That's a good thing. Uh, I don't know if they're missing Michael Thomas a little bit right now, too. We'll have to see if they can improve going down the line here. Next up, we had the Arizona Cardinals defeated the Minnesota Vikings in another one-point victory, 34-33. to The Cardinals pull out the win here, and they start 2-0 and here. Uh, the home team has won each of the last eight matchups between these two teams. In this case, the Arizona Cardinals did, too. I saw DeAndre Hopkins had a good uh, touchdown as well. Minnesota Vikings' Dalvin uh, Cook. Uh, has an ankle sprain. He left the game twice, but he returned to the game both times. So something to keep an eye on there for you fantasy owners of Dalvin Cook out there. Brandy, if you're listening. Uh, So (laughs) there's always that too. But he did come back, and he looked uh, decent, especially early on in this game before he came up uh, a couple times there. But uh, So, yeah, definitely something to keep an eye on, no no doubt about that. Uh, I do believe I might have mentioned, uh, or I forgot to mention in the Jacksonville Jaguars game, Wide receiver uh, LaVisca Chenault has a shoulder injury. He's expected to play next week, but worth monitoring, so keep that in mind as well. All right, so next game here, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, uh, the scoreboard, I, I feel like, is not indicative of the actual game here. The Buccaneers beat the Falcons 48-25. to uh, The Bucs uh, embarrassed the Falcons here a little bit at home. Uh, Tom Brady has four-plus t- uh, passing touchdowns in four straight games. He ties the second-longest streak since 1950, so... Is this guy ever going to stop? <laughs> I just I got I got a feeling he's just going to be playing until we're all retired. Uh, but mm-hmm. uh, yeah, the Buccaneers. I believe even Rob Gronkowski had two more touchdown uh, receptions here as well. Brady finds his favorite target here. So yeah, this uh, the Falcons are not in good shape right now. Um, I don't know where they're going to go. Uh, but in that division, it, it's I don't know who. I mean, you got the Saints, the Falcons. Both of them are kind of eh. Then you got the Panthers, who've looked good, and then. Uh, the Bucks. So the Bucks are clearly the, yeah. the division winners so far, in my opinion. But we'll have to see what's go. Long season still to come. Uh, then we have a, a game that kind of surprised me a little bit. The Tennessee Titans go into Seattle uh, and beat the Seahawks thirty-three to thirty. It kind of, I mean, the Titans kind of 
fell below expectations in week one and lose their opener. Uh, but the Seahawks here uh, fall uh, with the hands of Derrick Henry for the most part. He had 41 touches in this game, 237 scrimmage yards, uh, and three touchdowns. So Derrick oh. Henry looking like the beast that he is here. And, um, yeah, this game was completely on his shoulders. And not only that, he, he broke off a 60-yard touchdown run. And it was weird because he, he was, like, changing directions. But he was doing it so smooth for a big guy. Just gradually just changing direction and nobody could catch the dude. Uh, so as Den- Derrick Henry runs, so do the Tennessee Titans. And the Titans get their first win in the AFC South as well. So the Colts-Titans next week, hopefully the Colts will be ready for this team because we need this. And the Colts' next three games are on the road. So that's even tougher for the Indianapolis. So we'll see how they do. Uh, then we had the Cowboys. They defeated the Los Angeles Chargers in Los Angeles. Um, Greg Zerline, uh, Greg the Leg, had a game-winning 56-yard field goal as time expired to win this game here. Justin Herbert, uh, speaking of a guy who has him in two fantasy leagues, uh, has been playing some good football, but in this game in particular, he had, I believe, two touchdown passes called back on penalty. So it's kind of like, all right, that right there hurts you as a team, uh, no doubt about it. But he's definitely playing better than his stats indicate here. So I think the Chargers are going to be okay. Uh, but the Cowboys do what they need to do here. And there was a there was a nice uh, pass that C.D. Lamb caught in this game as well, and he started dodging all these tackles. He gets to about the 20-yard line. He sees he's about to get tackled. He chucks the ball to uh, Zeke Elliott. Yeah. He continues to run for about another 10. thought that was a great uh, little improv play. Played by C.D. Lamb there, and a heads-up played by Ezekiel Elliott as well. So good to see the Cowboys get on the war, on the uh, winning column here. Uh, so we'll see how these guys continue to play out as well. And the Sunday night game of this week, uh, the Baltimore Ravens, in my opinion, kind of pulled off a little bit of a stunner at home, yeah. though. So they had that advantage. But the Ravens, with another one-point victory here, 36-35 to over the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, this game was absolutely great. Uh, I watched this game from beginning to end. This was a fun game to watch, a shootout between two of the best quarterbacks in the league uh right now a lot of people have or especially Lamar has his detractors about can he throw the ball Mm -hmm. is he just a running back back there uh but Lamar Jackson had his ninth career game with 100 plus passing yards 100 plus rushing yards it's the most since 1950 so uh Lamar is definitely balling here and uh yeah he definitely did uh, at the end of the game especially uh when they I believe it was the game winning score. He did this flip into the end zone and it was like landed right on his hip. In my opinion, I'm like, ooh, I'm sure the coaches looked at him and like, don't do that, man. You don't, do that again. don't hurt yeah. yourself. Yeah, please don't. Because uh, you are the franchise right now. But uh, yeah. yeah, they. And, they uh, and he is. I mean, like I, like I said before, it's not that I'm, I'm going to sit here and sit on uh, Patrick Mahomes, but I you know uh, he. I think every good quarterback needs that humbling moment. Yeah, and, yeah. It should have happened week one against Cleveland. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, I think Patrick Mahomes needs needs to that. I think the whole Kansas City Chief team needs that. Yeah, I agree. And it, it only make him stronger. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But kudos to Lamar Jackson. He's another, you know, he's good young. Well, I don't know, young, but mm-hmm. uh, he's still good. And he's one of the guys that, you know, um, that have brought a team from a place where it was not good to where it, there's some similar to revel or, or, or you know some, some uh, uh, relevance, and the same thing with 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 uh, Baker Mayfield and uh, what he's doing up in Cleveland. So yeah, I mean, and, and I mean, let's not you know act like the you know the Chiefs got destroyed here. That's for sure. No, they, they did no. right, but like uh, there was. I mean, can't, I mean Mahomes was still doing Mahomes stuff. He was. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was at one point. There was even a pass where it looked like mid pass. He decided to change who he was throwing it to. It was mm-hmm. weird because like he was looking one way and then all of a sudden he's about right here with the ball and all of a sudden it went that way. So, <laughs> so I mean, he's doing things that are incredible, but there was also an instance in this game where he was getting tackled and he's falling to the ground, tried to pull one of his patented, I'm going to throw it anyway moves. This mm-hmm. one got intercepted. So, I mean, that he's he's making like it's it's weird because like if Brett Favre would have tried this ten years ago or whatever, Brett Favre gets picked off every time he tries to throw across his body over the middle of the field. Mahomes usually makes it work, but there's going to come a time like in this case where he threw the pick, it's going to hurt him. These QBs who are able to do that, yeah, you know, off the back foot. I mean, uh, well, shoot, even Lamar in this game jumped up and did like one of these. It was it was weird. Uh, That one went for a touchdown um, as the pocket collapsed on him. But yeah, I mean, most most quarterbacks they teach you don't do this stuff. Uh, or quarterback coaches do, and um, but Mahomes for whatever reason he, he's able to defy the odds in a lot of these scenarios. But at one sometime one of these days, it's going to come back to bite him at some point. And people, you know, as teams start to 
learn how to game plan against it. You still got to stop the guy, but he's fun to watch, no doubt about it. And hopefully, and, I, and I'm sure the Chiefs are going to be just fine. They're going to be in the fight for this, no doubt about it. But um, in this case, they just happen to fall just a little bit short. Um, as for the last game of the week uh, going on right now, the Monday Night Football game, Detroit at Green Bay right now. Well, <laughs> as I as I say that, the Green Bay Packers look to have just scored. It is now uh, 14 to 13 with about a minute and 52 left in the first half. So we've got a close one so far, basically a tight. Now it's 14-14 tie ball game going into halftime here on Monday Night Football. Looks like Aaron Rodgers uh, had a passing touchdown to Aaron Jones uh, that tied the game up here. The game opened with uh, Jared Goff uh, throwing a touchdown pass to Cephas. I don't know his first name. He's a new receiver to my to me. I know he kind of had a touchdown week one, so might be a guy to keep an eye on. Uh, Aaron Rodgers then made a short pass to Aaron Jones. So Aaron Jones has both touchdowns here uh, for the Packers, and of course uh, there was a touchdown pass to T.J. Hawkinson once again. Sorry, Brandon, because that is my tight end. Uh, but <laughs> so I apologize, buddy, for uh, smoking hey, you whatever. this week. Like I told you. <laughs> I don't like you. Yeah, I know, right? I didn't even want to talk. Like, I was so mad about it. <laughs> when I got to work, I was like. Yeah, so I just got Everybody gotta... else's games were kind of close. I, on the other hand, get my ass kicked right now. <laughs> but you know i mean you can't you can't win them all i suppose but i mean i'm sure i mean even though i'm two and oh right now yet. yeah i mean I'm, I'm sure in my as soon as, as soon as i play matt i'll be uh on the losing end of this i have no doubt about it yeah, but i don't play him Miranda, really. she, she's getting another league a random league that she joined trying to join ours she ended up joining the random league she's won both her weeks in there. <laughs> and that's the way it goes. Like I mean, I like I said, I told you I played a. I think I think I can't remember how old he is. He's like a. He's not. He's maybe twelve, thirteen, maybe. Uh-huh. Maybe not even that. And he had a random auto draft. I got smoked by him in week one. So he it's kind of like his, his, his your yeah. cousin. Uh, it's my cousin's son. Yeah, his cousin's son. He's like twelve. Yeah. He got a random auto draft, <laughs> and he got his ass smoked. by I got Eric's- smoked. I mean, I didn't even score. Week one. I didn't even score eighty points. It was didn't that even bad. Score eighty points. It was terrible. Um, she said, yeah. "Next year, I'm auto drafting." <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Sometimes it works. I mean, I'm not. I'm not going to lie. All right. So, with that being said, I think we ran through all the injuries um, and pretty much kind of discussed. I think the highlights here. Um, so let's get into the, these games for week three. Um, Thursday night football will be the Carolina Panthers at the Houston Texans. Uh, the I got a feeling the Panthers are going to roll here. Christian McCaffrey would be a good week to start him, uh, which I will do in both my leagues. We'll see how that goes, but no starting quarterback for the Texans. Sunday night uh, with the Colts at the Tennessee Titans, the Falcons at the New York Giants, the Los Angeles Chargers at the Kansas City Chiefs. That might be one worth watching right there. Yes. Um, the Bengals at the Steelers, another one that could be interesting, depending on Joe Burrow and all that way that could be. Uh, yeah. We'll see for sure. The Bears at the at the Cleveland Browns, that's another one. Defense against the Browns offense could be interesting to see. The Ravens at the Lions. Uh, the Lions, like I said, are giving a game with the Packers and get good week one. That could be another one. Saints versus Patriots. Uh, if this was uh, Brady versus Breeze, it'd be one thing. Now, I'm yeah. not so sure. I mean, that could be a toss-up. Uh, Patriots yeah. at home, though, I tend to want to give them the edge here since the Saints are kind of, you know, without a home right now with the whole Hurricane Ida situation in uh, the Superdome. Uh, but uh, they'll be on the road against New England, so probably give them the advantage. The Cardinals at the Jacksonville Jaguars. i got a feeling the Cardinals will roll there. Uh, the Buffalo Bills, uh, they're hosting the Washington football team. Uh, could be interesting, uh, I, but I'm going to give it to the Bills on that one. You're going to give it to the Bills. I probably would too. They're they're at home, so yeah, it makes the most sense. Jets at the Broncos. Again, Broncos. who knows? I, I'm That's taking Broncos on the way, defense. Though, I'll take the Broncos for that one. I hear you. Uh, then the Dolphins at the Las Vegas Raiders. Feels like the Dol- or the Raiders. Could I think go. the Raiders. I think. Derek Carr is is the on a roll, man. Yeah, it could. now now watch. You know the ones that look obvious are usually uh-huh. the ones with the with the upsets here. Uh, this is a good game. Uh, Sunday at or yeah, well, not this one. Uh, the Seahawks at the Minnesota Vikings could be a de- an interesting one depending on Dalvin Cook. This game I really want to watch. The Buccaneers at the Los Angeles Rams. Yeah, that the first time that Tom Brady has ever played in Los Angeles. So that's an interesting stat to note there as well. And then, of course, the Sunday night game will be the Packers at the 49ers, depending on the running back situation, how this game goes tonight on Monday Night Football. And, of course, the Monday night game next week is an NFC East rivalry. The Philadelphia Eagles will travel to the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, so we'll see how that goes as well. So interesting slate of games coming up next week. A couple big matchups that I'm really interested to see, and I'm as a Colts fan, definitely want to see how they do against the Tennessee Titans in uh, Nashville. So that'll be interesting to watch as well. Any other thoughts on these weeks? three games or no other than Miranda just realized she's got to play you next week 
Oh no, yes. <laughs> he said, "Oh no, yes." <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even looked to see who she plays or anything like that. So, uh, could be interesting. Uh-huh. I'm, uh, yeah. Uh oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! She's gonna bench Ben this week. Oh, of course she would against me. You know, <laughs> now, uh, go Big Ben, throw for five touchdown passes against uh, who was he played Cincinnati? Yeah, they yeah, Cincinnati. I don't know, man. That matchup's gonna be and, and, and let her know that the Eagles, uh, her other quarterback is Jalen Hurts, plays the it Cowboys can't... on Monday night. Now, granted, the Cowboys' defense is weak. They're but not. Yeah. Do you want to wait till Monday night? That's the question. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, we'll Let's see try. there. Let you try. He tried, I don't yeah. know. That's it's a, it's a toss up either matchup on that one, man. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't blame her either way, to be honest with you. Um, so we'll see how it goes. But uh, I guess if that's all there is to it, I guess that'll wrap up this week's edition of the NFL Recap Show here for week two of the NFL season here. Uh, we're just trying this out. We're, we're getting used to this NFL Recap stuff, so I'm sure we'll get better along the way here. We're kind of playing it uh, you know, as best as we can right now, and hopefully we'll maybe figure out some little tricks and things to talk more about these games and maybe figure out some other segments or something. But right now, we're, uh, I think it's going pretty well so far. So yeah. we'll continue to improve here and see if we can get this show a little bit better as well. Because uh, I think we kind of hit a groove with the with the wrestling stuff. We're kind of getting mm-hmm. used to this one a little bit, so give us a little time here. But if you're finding this for the very first time, please click that like and subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you get all the notifications about when we put up new content right here on this channel. And until our next video, guys, take care.